Matt Benjamin is an astronomer who's been coming to Idaho for years with his family. He also happens to have an observatory set up in an old grain silo next to his house. Um, like to hopefully show us uh, the Andromeda galaxy before the clouds come in. He's part of a team of conservationists and business owners who banded together to get nearly a million acres in central Idaho designated a dark sky reserve by the International Dark Sky Association, a nonprofit based in Tucson and the de facto authority on night sky pollution. So this is what you're trying to protect? Absolutely. It's all about the dark skies. Now, certainly for someone like myself, who's, who's an astronomer who likes to use telescopes, it's more about also being able to just see it with your naked eye. Um, to me, that's the most accessible part of what makes the sky so, so beautiful. As we continue to see the fact that 80% of Americans can't see the Milky Way, well, there's very few places that can. The reserve, which was made official yesterday, limits light pollution to keep the night sky in its natural dark state. But in order for the region to get the official sign-off, four counties all need to comply with local light ordinances meaning people and businesses need to change the kind of lights they were using. So how's business been since the ordinance? Uh, business has been terrific. People are very cognizant about the ordinance, and I think that they're looking for the proper product. Like this one here right. is a compliant fixture. What we have here is no bulb hanging below the surface that is going to admit in your face a filament, and it has a soft glow. Are all these changes driving you crazy? They are, because you can't keep up with it. And especially when uh, our cities each have their own ordinances. We've had to take a look at everything from the output of the lights, whether or not it's being projected forward, and uh, we have to educate our clients. Part of the reserve is in Sun Valley, an affluent ski area where property values are five times higher than the rest of Idaho. But complying with the new rules wasn't actually that expensive because many of the towns had similar light ordinances already in place. The reserve just expanded them. It's about covering your outdoor lights, your uh, lights around your business, and keeping them at a low wattage. So th these icicle lights, do they comply or wh where do they fit in? Well, they're LEDs and they're on a timer. Uh -huh. There's a balance, right? You gotta promote your business, but then you also have to adhere to the night sky ordinance. You take it for granted when you live here. People that come from the city are uh, bedazzled <laughs> by all the stars they can see. Brett Seymour studies the health effects of light pollution at Colorado State University as a behavioral ecologist, which, believe it or not, is an actual job. One of the ways he does this is by shooting a laser at different kind of lights to measure their wavelengths. This is the light that's coming from that light source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what this is showing is the specific color of light across the visible spectrum and the amount of light that's hitting this detector. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you hit these lights, it just spikes up. Spikes way up. Seymour is especially concerned with blue light, the kind of light that comes out of televisions and your cell phone. It's the most disruptive kind of light in the spectrum and is also prevalent in newer types of light sources, which many cities are adopting for efficiency. Blue light and shorter wavelengths of light are important to animal behavior and human health. This evolved so we know when it's night and when it's day. So you have a blue light, it's telling you that it's day, even though it's night. These are actually really detrimental to your biology because your brain still thinks it's daytime. Although light pollution is increasing at a rate of 2% each year, the effects of light pollution are still largely unstudied. The few studies which have been conducted show links between light pollution, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and breast cancer. Animals, including ourselves, have evolved over millions of years under these natural conditions. And now, globally, we have light pollution everywhere. Is it too late for a place like Vegas? Is it too late for a place like Los Angeles? No, it's, it's not too late. Light pollution is the only pollution I can think of that is simply flipping a switch, your pollution is gone. The Central Idaho Dark Sky Reserve may be the first of its kind in the U.S., though people like Matt Benjamin hope it won't be the last. But to keep their own reserve up to par, they'll have to make sure things stay dark. I'll show you the light meter. It's pretty simple. It's, you just sort of point it up at the sky. 21.07. And so that, that, that's really dark. This is probably one of the darkest places in the lower 48 of the United States. Wow, wow, wow. This whole blanket of stars. 
This is world-class darkness.